Vegan protein is worse for you than animal protein. This is a hot topic and a debate that I see online everywhere. But which one is actually better for you when it comes to building muscle? I am here at Gold's Gym in Venice Beach. This is the mecca of bodybuilding. And if anybody knows the answer to this question, they're probably gonna be in there. Which one's better for building muscle? The whey protein. The whey protein? Mm -hmm. Animal protein or plant protein? Definitely animal protein. Animal protein? Animal protein, I guess, like meat and fish. Okay. Neither, both are effective. I would say animal protein for sure. Uh, plant protein. Animal protein without question, I would say. So it's pretty obvious that most people in the gym believe that animal protein is better than vegan protein when it comes to building muscle. What does the research say? What do scientists say? To better understand this, I invited my friend Simon Hill, who is the host of The Proof Podcast, also a nutritionist getting his master's degree, where I'm going to ask him some of the most common questions about protein. All right, Simon, so there is a lot of confusion about which source of protein, animal protein or vegan protein, protein is actually superior. What do you think? I think it comes down to how you define superior. Mm. Let's go train and I can tell you how I think about this. Okay, let's go. All right, Simon. So let's start from the top down. You're gonna be doing a spot. No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> what are the main differences between animal protein and vegan protein? The two big differences that people kind of focus on are amino acid distribution and the bioavailability. So animal proteins tend to be a little richer in branch chain amino acids, which are particularly important for building muscle. And there's some small differences in bioavailability, which really just means digestibility. How much of that okay. protein can your body actually utilize? Yeah, yeah. This is actually a really big saying in the bodybuilding world is that you're not what you eat, you're what you absorb. Right. So the assumption is that plant protein is absorbed less. Yes, so, and that's probably true to an extent, but the difference in digestibility between plant and animal protein historically has been hugely overestimated. There's a couple of reasons. One is studies in years gone by have fed plant protein to animals that hasn't been properly prepared. So the plant proteins, the legumes haven't been soaked or cooked. They're just fed raw. Yeah. And we know that when you prepare these plant foods like beans and other, other types of legumes properly, the, you have to cook them. the protein becomes more available. After you cook or soak them. Correct. Yeah. So that's one. And then the Makes second, sense. the other reason is that in most of the studies looking at animal protein, so say chicken or beef or eggs, they're feeding that isolated food to the animal and looking at the digestibility okay. whereas most people are consuming mixed meals so if yeah. they're having eggs beef or chicken they're having that in a meal with broccoli or sweet potato that contain certain compounds like fiber mm -hmm. that would reduce the actual net bioavailability of the protein in that animal food i see i see yeah and, and same goes with vegans right because most of these studies are done using isolates like yeah. soy protein or pea protein isolate as the alternative vegan protein, right? And no vegan that I know of is sitting here exclusively only eating soy protein as its only food source. Right. We now know from more recent studies that the differences in that bioavailability are probably only a few percent. Uh -huh. Mac, you know, up to a maximum of about 10%. 10. Oh, he's on the, he's on the kilos 10 now. 10 kilos. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning. Quick math, how many kilos is this? Uh, 150. Is it really? Right? No. 20, Wait, 20 40. Oh, but they're, 20, they're a little 40. bit out, but say 20, 40, 50. It's 120. 120. Okay. That's close. <laughs> Tried to add 30 kilos. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Simon. So you mentioned that certain plant proteins have a, a different amino acid distribution. Does that mean that plant protein is lacking or missing essential amino acids for building muscle? I love this question. <laughs> the most important thing for people to understand here, firstly, is that all plants contain all nine essential amino acids, which might be news to some people. Essential amino acids are the amino acids that are building blocks for protein that our body cannot make, that we have to get through our diet. So all plants contain all nine of those. People may have heard of incomplete protein versus complete protein, and yeah. I think that's where the confusion comes from. Totally. So to fully appreciate this, we need to understand what 
what are the definitions for a complete protein versus an incomplete protein. Mm. It's true that certain plant foods, many of them, are what we would call incomplete proteins. That doesn't mean that any of those nine essential amino acids are completely missing. It just means that if you were to eat that single food for all of your calories and all of your protein, you would fall short on a particular amino acid. But of course- Nobody does that. Nobody in a developed country is doing that, but where it is relevant is in a developing country where perhaps there's food insecurity and maybe someone only has access to one type of grain or plant for all of their calories. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, somebody who's been vegan for almost a decade and vegetarian before that my whole life, I have never once combined or intentionally combined foods to complete or pair amino acids. Even when I was bodybuilding, I never once tracked a single amino acid and never had any issue putting on muscle. Just eat a diversity of different plant-based protein sources. That's pretty much right. all I did. And just focus on enough total protein. And yeah. if there's just a modest amount of diversity, which most people will have, just naturally through creating meals, mixed yeah. meals, then the amino acids take care of themselves. There you go. So one of the biggest comments that I get online is that I would actually be much bigger and stronger if I ate meat. All right, Simon, so sometimes when we talk about amino acid profile, absorbability, people get really confused. So if we were to just worry about the brass tacks, like what does somebody like me who is vegan and wants to build muscle need to worry about? Right, let's simplify this. So what actually matters? We have now multiple clinical trials that have compared completely vegan diets to omnivorous diets and looked at the outcomes that someone like you or I or people training here today would actually care about. Building muscle and protein. And what we see in these studies is if you're consuming an optimal amount of protein, so 1.6 grams per kilogram up to two grams per kilogram of body weight, we see no significant differences in the rate of muscle protein synthesis in the building of strength or hypertrophy, the building of muscle. So number one is making sure you're consuming enough total protein. And then following that, how you distribute that protein also matters. So there is some research, at this stage it's mostly animal studies, that suggest it's better to evenly distribute your protein out across a day. So if your target is say 160 grams of protein, rather than having that all in one meal, a more effective strategy for building strength and muscle would be to divide that into three or four meals spread throughout the day with sort of two or three hours at least between those meals. Pretty much what I do just naturally yeah. eating is I eat every three hours or so and my target is about 150 to 160 grams of protein and even as a vegan it's really easy to hit those targets without trying. Sometimes I go over without even really putting much thought into it. So as long as I'm eating my high protein plant foods like lentils, tofu, tempeh, I have a protein shake, legumes, beans, things like that, it's pretty easy to hit those targets. And that's the key takeaway here is if you're achieving that optimal total protein intake, these differences in amino acid distribution or in bioavailability do not seem to matter for the things that we actually care about. Which is getting these gains, baby. <laughs> A continuation of this if you want to go there. Yeah. I would also argue that when it comes to our health, it's not all about getting jacked. <laughs> There's more to health <laughs> than that. And one of the advantages of eating more plant-based sources of protein is that the research is really clear. This is a great way to shift really important biomarkers of disease, like your cholesterol, into a favorable direction. And the long-term studies show that when you're swapping calories from animal foods for plant foods rich in plant protein, you're lowering your risk of cardiovascular disease, having a heart attack or a stroke, and even premature deaths. All right, Simon, so we talked all about protein today in this workout. We talked about digestibility, absorbability, amino acid profile, and total amount needed to maximize building muscle. So in your expert opinion, which one is better? Animal protein or plant protein? That all comes down to how we define better. For me personally, I think we have to broaden or open the lens, the aperture, and consider more than just the results in the gym. We've already discussed you can get the same results as long as you're consuming an optimal amount of protein. 
but plant protein we know is superior to animal protein from, from the perspective of your long-term health, your risk of chronic disease and how long you live. It's also better for the environment and it's a more compassionate choice. Even leading scientists that I've interviewed on my show are now changing their view on this topic of animal versus plant protein based on these recent studies. And look, as somebody who used to consume dairy products and swapped for a completely plant-based diet, I saw no decline in my strength or my performance. If anything, I saw major benefits. I was recovering faster, I felt less inflamed, my mental clarity went through the roof, and I was able to come in here and train more frequently and put on more muscle in a shorter amount of time. All right, thank you, Simon, so much for coming on and educating me and everybody else about some of the benefits of, or some of the differences between animal and plant-based protein. And if you lay it all out and you are somebody who wants to build muscle, you also care about your longevity, you care about the health of the planet, and you want to reduce your risk of contracting diseases later, or cardiovascular diseases later on in life, then maybe swapping to a plant-based protein source or even consuming more of it might be a better option. So. For those of you watching, let me know down in the comments what you're going to do. If this video was helpful at all, or if you want further clarification on the differences between animal protein and plant-based protein, leave a comment down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And don't forget to give Simon and his podcast a follow.